right. So um, it's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Oh. Get going. Okay. okay. Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the K-12 Strong Workforce Program Selection Committee Welcome Webinar. Um, before today's presenters are Sandra Sanchez from the California Community College Chancellor's Office and Michelle McIntosh from the California Department of Education. And before I pass it over to them, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, all attendees' mics are muted. However, we're going to be uh, monitoring the chat. If you have questions, please feel free to ask those questions in the chat. However, those questions will not be addressed during today's sessions. We will get you those responses, though. Today's session is being recorded for future viewing. And I guess I will now pass it over to Sandra and Michelle. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sandra Sanchez from the Chancellor's Office. Um, and, and hi, everyone. This is Michelle McIntosh from the California Department of Education. So good afternoon today. For To briefly get us started, just want to go over today's objective. Um, you want to share a brief overview of the K-12 Strong Workforce Application and Award Process review the selection committee roles and responsibilities, identify some key dates, um, and um, capture any questions regarding the role of the selection committee. Um, and just for, um, for everyone, uh, uh, we will not be answering questions during the session today. However, we will capture your questions in the chat box as stated earlier, and we will share the responses uh, with the regional chairperson uh, who are uh, participating in this project. So an overview of the K-12 Strong Workforce Program. It's important to quickly review the intent of the K-12 Strong Workforce Program for those who may be new to this work. The K-12 Strong Workforce Program is a joint effort between the Chancellor's Office and the California Department of, Department of Education designed to support intersegmental partnerships between LEAs, our local education agencies, and California community colleges to strengthen CTE programs and pathways aligned with regional workforce needs. Additionally, we're supporting LEAs in developing and implementing high quality K-14 CTE core, sequence pro core sequences, programs, and pathways that one, facilitate K-12 student exploration and selection of learning opportunities leading to career paths, two, build foundational career path skills, three, enable seamless and successful transition from secondary to post-secondary education or to industry-valued certificates and degrees. The goal of preparing students to enter into employment and occupations for which there is a documented demand and which pay a livable wage. So first of all, um, we want to start by thanking our returning members, uh, selection committee members for your ongoing commitment, and also to thank our new members for joining this effort. The selection committee is key to the success of the K-12 Strong Workforce Program. Uh, the the K-12 Strong Workforce Program is focused on building CT programs that provide our students with pathways to livable wages and that meet the workforce needs of regional economies. The governor, the legislature, the chancellor's office, and the California Department of Ed recognize that for this effort to be successful, it must be responsive to the unique opportunities and challenges of each region and must engage the efforts of K-12, community colleges, and other workforce development stakeholders. To ensure this happens, the K-12 Strong Workforce Program selection committees are empowered to be stewards of these funds for the region on behalf of the state. Uh, the selection committees bring together a cross-section of leadership and a variety of perspectives grounded in each region's realities tasked with selecting a portfolio of investments that collectively advance the goals of the Strong Workforce Program. To that end, the selection committee is empowered to make decisions based on applications submitted and to take into consideration the region's needs and opportunities past investments of both the Strong Workforce Program and the CTEG Program. Your, the selection committee's judgment, experience, and stewardship of these funds is critical to the success 
of the state's efforts to provide our students with pathways to prosperity and to meeting our regional economy's critical workforce needs. This is a new approach to funding and is a work in progress. We paid a great deal of attention to the feedback that the selection committee members provided on the first year um, and we made significant adjustments. We are co-creating this process together. As the primary stewards of these funds, we will be asking for your continued engagement in shaping this process, including weekly phone calls with the selection committee chairs and other data collection efforts. As we work through the process, please note what works and please let us also know what could be improved upon. So this year, there are eight regional selection committee teams with between 12 and 24 members per region for a total of approximately 200 selection committee members across the state. Selection committee teams are comprised of individuals with expertise in K-12 CTE or workforce development, including K-12 CTE teachers and administrators, charter school representatives, career guidance counselors, industry representatives in the region's priority areas, and community college faculty member and administrators. The K-12 Strong Workforce Program year one, we accomplished a lot. Let's see exactly what you accomplished. So last year's selection committee members read and scored 478 applications, awarding funds to 242 of those applications. After careful and considered, considerate deliberations, members awarded $150 million to LEAs across the state with awarded amounts ranging from less than $4,000 to $4.6 million. In year one, overall, a majority of funds were awarded to school districts, followed by regional occupational centers and programs, county offices of education, and charter schools is displayed on the chart. So for year two, we have implemented some changes. We have been collecting data and feedback from many of you throughout the administrative process, both formally through interviews and surveys, and informally through discussions, asking how we could improve the application scoring and deliberation process for year two. The feedback provided was instrumental in shaping this year's K-12 Strong Workforce application and process. Based on your feedback, we made the following changes and modifications. We developed a simpler, more intuitive application with more pre-populated sections. We revised plans, messaging, and materials to be more inclusive of all stakeholders, incorporating K-12 and community college vernacular, terminology, definitions, and metrics. And we lowered the award cap from 5 million to 2 million and limited the number of awards per LEA as a lead partner or uh, to three. In addition, uh, so what this means for selection committees is basically um, it's shorter, more concise applications um, limited to the number and types of attachments. We really tried to pare down what we are asking you to review. And then of course, providing you more resources in scoring and deliberation to support that effort. Um, year two allocations are uh, on the screen that you can review the um, allocations by region. So the, the eight teams that we'll be reviewing will be distributing the amounts listed on the chart. Eligible applicants. So eligible applicants remain the same. Eligible K-12 strong workforce applicants include uh, school districts, regional occupational centers or programs, county offices of education, and charter schools. With regard to funding levels, remember that funding levels are based on total ADA of the institution. The total ADA is equal to the sum of all individual K-12 schools or institutions listed on the application, not the district ADA. For year two, funding was capped at $2 million to be able to award more LEAs. Key elements of CTE programs and pathways. For year two, we're supporting work that embraces key elements which we know are the foundation of successful CTE programs. Specifically, programs or pathways that one, leverage CTE efforts, including 
the CTE Incentive Grant, Perkins 5, and Strong Workforce. Two, foster collaborative partnerships between our K-12 and community college partners. Three, align to regional priorities and opportunities. And four, offer pathways with high quality CTE curriculum and instruction. We want to be sure that we're leveraging our CTE efforts and in doing so, the K-12 Strong Workforce Program is designed to support the work already established under Perkins 5, uh, the CTE Incentive Grant, and more funding. By leveraging other sources dedicated to CTE programs and pathways, an LEA is demonstrating its commitment to CTE. It can leverage funding sources such as CTIG, Perkins 5, and LCFS, or it can leverage resources from other partners. Speaking of collaborative partnerships, partnerships are critical to the success of a K-14 pathway. This year, a partnership with at least one community college or community college district is required since the K-14 pathway really can't happen without this intersegmental partnership. So again, required partnership is a California community college partner. Encouraged partnerships include, but certainly aren't limited to collaborative partners, um, such as business or industry organizations, K-12 partner agencies, for example, other local education agencies, and other higher education partners as well. Let's talk regional priorities. So regional priorities, applications for the K-12 Strong Workforce Program funds should be responsive to the regional priorities and regional workforce needs. Regional workforce needs reflect the employment gaps in your geographical area, and workforce labor market information reported in the regional consortium's regional plan informs how CTE pathways can strategically lead students to living wage employment. This then brings us to high quality curriculum and instruction. So this year we're asking K-12 Strong Workforce Program applicants to use their high quality CTE program evaluation already completed for their CTE incentive grant application as a tool to guide how they will target the, their K-12 Strong Workforce Program funds. The rubric is a valuable tool to help applicants identify the strengths of their CTE pathways, where they need support, and therefore where to target their resources. It's also important to note that while applicants must include their program evaluation, selection committee members will not be scoring this instrument. Another valuable tool that applicants will be drawing from is the California Career Technical Education Model Curriculum Standards Guide, which identifies viable industry sectors and pathways and crosswalks them with anchor standards. So tools and resources to support selection committee members. Today we are welcoming selection committee members and providing a high level overview of the K-12 Strong Workforce Program. Each of you will participate in an in-depth regional training and will be given access to a number of tools and materials to support your training and work. These onboarding and training materials include a regional day-long training uh, that will be scheduled by your regional consortia uh, sometime between uh, January 6th and January 17th. NOVA uh, platform training, which is scheduled for January 16th and is hosted by the Chancellor's Office. And um, in addition, weekly check-in calls for selection committee chairs and co-chairs. Um, while the calls are reserved for the selection committee chairs, weekly calls are an opportunity for the selection committee team leaders to surface any questions or issues that you might have an opportunity or problem to solve as a group. Uh, in addition to that, uh, each region is hosting a mandatory long day training for selection committee members. These sessions are important since they frame the vision and the context for this work. They walk through the scoring and deliberation process, they engage participants in sample calibration activities, and they share scoring rubrics and discuss the selection committee work and timeline. So just a brief overview, and I think what's important here is that we, uh, CDE and the Chancellor's Office are committed to making sure that we support selection committee members. We want to emphasize the primary roles of the selection committee. Uh, 
Uh, again, um, this year, the selections will be charged with independently reading, reviewing, and scoring applications, then coming together as a regional selection committee team to deliberate and select the final recommended list of award recipients, as well as the amount to be awarded. The primary responsibilities of the selection committee members uh, begin with um, making sure that the 150 million K-12 um, strong workforce dollars are allocated to the applicants who have applied. Therefore, it's important that the selection committee members agree to the following. One, maintaining confidentiality throughout the review and scoring process. Two, to participate in the regional provided training sessions. Three, use the material specifically developed to support the scoring and deliberation process. Four, to abide by your region's established internal controls and processes to ensure impartiality and objectivity in scoring. And this will be specifically discussed in your regional training, your all-day training. Uh, five, uh, to recuse yourself from the reviewing, scoring, and or deliberating on applications where there may be a conflict of interest, including any personal or professional relationship with an applicant organization, potential for financial or personal benefit from an award, or any other relationship that would prevent you from being impartial. And then six, uh, responsibility is really to abide by all the established timelines. The next slide, um, we listed the timelines for um, the selection committee work. A reminder that each of you will receive more detailed timeline, but we wanted to highlight some key dates here. The K-12 application required forms and our supporting documents were due on December 18th. Applications will be read, scored, and selection committee will deliberate between January 12th through February 21st of 2020. The NOVA platform training webinar is scheduled for January 16th, and you should have received a registration link. And K-12 Strong Workforce Awards will be announced in late February. We thank you for your time today, and we hope that this, uh, this webinar was informative to you and our expectations of what the selection committee members' roles are for uh, this year's uh, grants. And again, this is Michelle, and I'd just like to thank you and thank Sandra for her time and, and to say uh, thank you, all of you, um, for participating in this, in this valuable effort um, to provide these funds to the field. So again, thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.